I remember the hype for this being insane. <music> Avengers Infinity War, released in 2018, directed by the Russo Brothers, starring Thanos and then everybody else. Production budget of 316 million, a worldwide taking of just over 2 billion, for a total profit of 1.7 billion dollars. Less all marketing and associated costs, but really, who cares at that point? I mean, like, the profits from this movie alone could fund the next, what, six or seven upcoming Marvel movies? Okay, so let's get into it. Now, there is so much to talk about in this movie. It just covers so much. There's so many characters, so many things, so many fights. In fact, this movie feels like the fight movie half of the Infinity War saga. So it's a case of everything in this movie is pretty well fantastic, but we all expected it to be so. We'd actually have something to talk about here if it was terrible. That we could just tear apart and rip into. So what I want to focus on is some of the character combos. Some of the team-ups that were particularly interesting in this. One of those is Stark and Strange. I really enjoyed the dynamic of that particular pairing. Now it starts off as Stark and Strange and Wong and Banner, you know, and then they sprinkle in some Spider-Man as well. But the actual dynamic I really enjoyed was Tony Stark versus Stephen Strange. The magician and the master mechanic. That is two powerful egos with two incredible skill sets. Opposite sides of the coin, very similar personality though. Steven's number one goal was protecting the Time Stone, and he would sacrifice everyone to do so or so he said, until he like glanced into the future realities and realized what he actually needed to do. Tony's number one driving force was just to stop Thanos. He didn't actually care about much else. He really just had to get the job done. Almost in a suicidal self-sacrifice sort of way. As he said to Parker on the spaceship, this is a one-way ticket. He was fully expecting never to come back from this. I also found it interesting that they never went down the path of who's smarter. I was kind of expecting that, except they just didn't they just didn't do it. It was just attitude and agenda. And I just like the fact that they didn't like each other very much. Strange is being all aloof and cold and a little snide there. Whereas Tony's been through too much to care about niceness anymore. He just says what he's thinking. He thinks the guy should be playing with balloon animals. It's a shame that we never got to see them really be friends, because those two as actual buddies would have been fantastic to watch. I mean the line to banner about come on Bruce, you're embarrassing me in front of the wizards. That was great. But yeah, it felt really good to see those two working together on screen. Next one is Thor and the Guardians of the Galaxy. I didn't really know how that was going to play out. I had expected Thor to be a bit more of a buddy to them. Not this kind of, basically a bully. He wakes up on the ship, he threatens everyone. He's quite disrespectful in many ways. He takes their food, steals a ship, and nicks off. I did enjoy the way Drax was openly admiring Thor's physique, you know, like it's like a pirate had a baby with an angel. Watching Star-Lord and Thor kind of like face off there, Star-Lord had zero chance of standing up to Thor if he decided to act. Kind of would like to see that. I would have liked to see Star-Lord push it a bit too far and get bounced off a wall. Also enjoy the fact that Rocket just leaves and goes, nope, I'm off to check out the world's greatest armory. I'm gonna go see where they build the biggest guns. That was his only interest, and off he goes. Also showcase the fact that Rocket has grown from the last two movies. He's got a way to get to people, and relate to them. He sympathizes with Thor, he helps Thor. He actually makes a connection there. As he says, well, time to be the captain, and goes and does the captain thing. I, I didn't expect those leadership qualities from Rocket. I really didn't. And all that leads, of course, into the Guardians having an encounter with Stark, Parker, and Strange, and battling the Mad Titan on his homeworld. The dynamic in that group was very unusual. On one side, you got three of the smartest people in the MCU versus the Space Bros. That's that's pretty much it. The brains and the bros. It almost looks like Stark's about to cry. Teamed up and nearly took down the Titan until he had a tantrum and blew it. And of course, Thor, Rabbit, and Tree turning up in Wakanda to save the day. Literally. Rolling in with a thundercloud and annihilating everything in front of them. I mean, everyone else in Wakanda, that was quite an interesting dynamic. All the other heroes working together to defend Wakanda. That was cool. I enjoyed that. But there was so much happening in space. There was so much cool space opera stuff going on that the stuff back on Earth, it was all right. It just wasn't as good as the other half. But that's all right, because like the Guardians were the focus. Well, the Guardians and all the space stuff were the focus for this movie because on Endgame it's back on Earth. It's all focused back there again. So there's even share. It's just spread across two movies. 
So there's my thoughts on Infinity War. Not really a review, to be honest, because there's too much to pack into five minutes. But I enjoyed talking about two of my favourite dynamics within the movie. Scores at the top, no surprises there. Thanks for watching, hope you're having a great week, and that you find some time to go and watch a movie.